Hi everyone, yep, unfortunately, the animation of the banana peeling itself was made in mid-journey, Nano Banana just can't do that. But the first and last frames were actually created using the Cinema 4D script, and I'm about to show you how. We launch the script, hit render, wait a bit for the scene to finish rendering. I mean, yes, it's just a regular Cinema 4D render here, like we used to do in a picture viewer. And then write the prompt, like, uh, make this yellow similar to Snake Thing a real banana, but keep its shape. Now click generate and wait a little more. Wow, it turned out even better than the thumbnail. Notice that we also get a message from banana in the chat, something like, here's your banana. Notice also that the previous image has appeared in the previous frame preview slot. The chat keeps its context the entire time the script window is open, so we can freely make adjustments to our image. Let's ask Banana to add a smiling face with a big mouth to it. Be honest, would you buy a banana snack with a label like this, a banana snack called Banana Snake, with a face right in the middle for some reason? Well, whatever. I wouldn't buy it by the way. So, I guess you're wondering where to get all this, how to install, and what the prices are. Let's go step by step. Open the Gumroad link from the video description and click Add to Cart. I'd love to tip myself, maybe 10% of zero, but I'm broke today, so never mind, we'll download it for free. Now open the archive you just downloaded. The difference between a script and a plugin is that if a script requires any external components to work, you'll unfortunately need to install them manually. And it's cheaper, of course. To do that, run this scary looking DOS file install envcmd and wait. This white letters in a black window thing will automatically download and install Python along with all the necessary dependencies on your computer. For Mac users, there's no one-click solution yet. I'm planning to include it in the next version, but feel free to feed this cmd file to ChatGPT and ask it to write a terminal equivalent. Here it asks you to enter your Google API key, if you have one, but you most probably don't, so just type N, hit enter and close the scary window. Select both Nano C4D Pi and external Gene TXT files and copy them. Put them in C, Users, your user folder, App Data, Roaming, Maxon, your Cinema 4D folder, Library, Scripts, create one if there isn't. Now let's go to where NanoBanana usually lives, heyistudiogoogle.com. Create an account there if you don't already have one, and then click the magical Get API Key link. Click Create API Key, give your key a name, and don't forget to create a new project for it at the bottom. I've already got everything set up, so I'll just close this window for now, but Google will ask you to link your credit card. Don't worry, it won't actually charge you anything. As far as I understand, and of course this may depend on region and other factors, you'll be given free generations worth $300 over 90 days, which is quite a lot given that one generation costs about 3 cents USD, and after that period you'll only be charged for new generations, and most likely by then we'll have an even more awesome AI. For now, just click on your key name in this list and press the copy icon. Now go to your Cinema 4D extensions menu, User Scripts, Nano C4D, and press the Set API Key button. Paste your copied API key in this dialog and hit OK. Alright, we're ready to go wild. Let's burn through our free $300 on as much nonsense as possible. Let's open the scene from the asset browser with the room and see how it renders for us. Attention, and I really want to stress this, never, under any circumstances, start an endless progressive render, or even a very long one here. It will freeze cinema, and unfortunately, there's nothing I've been able to do about it. The render, of course, isn't exactly a masterpiece, but hey, we can do much, much worse. We can even go with a plain old OpenGL preview instead, at least that way we can crank up the resolution and not worry about render times. Perfect. It really can't get any worse than this. Now take a look at the preview thumbnails on the right side of the script window. You can double click any of them to load an image as a reference. Let's load a couple of reference images then. Don't forget to check the boxes next to them. Without those checks, they won't be counted as part of the prompt. Make the room look cool, um, cyberpunk looking, like on the reference images. Don't add objects or change the overall shape.
updates. Yep, gotta say, it looks pretty chill. Let's uncheck the boxes so Banana understands we're now working only with the generated image. Add smiling robot face flying in the middle of the room. I got no words to say. By the way, you can scale up the image with a mouse wheel and drag it pressing the wheel pretty much like in the picture viewer. You can also delete all these references, just selecting them with the mouse and pressing Dell on your keyboard. All the images you generate are saved to the path shown in the chat. You can copy that path and open the picture in your default image viewer or just in Windows Explorer. All the images you generate are saved in this folder right next to your Cinema 4D scripts. No, this scary face is totally freaking me out. Make the face not so scary, please. Alright, fine. This time let's assume this artificial dude isn't scary at all and won't wipe out humanity anytime soon. I forgot to mention one more thing. That drop down on the right is the aspect ratio. And since I'm broke, I was planning to post something to my everyday's Instagram and then sell it as NFT. Thanks, this thing is definitely going to make me rich. As you've probably realized during the video, the script turned out to be pretty much useless. You can get the exact same results right in your browser, but I think I'll make a proper paid version later. Add Seadream, include the ability to paint over areas you want to fix, and of course turn it into a full plugin instead of a script. No more scary black and white windows to open. In the meantime, you can keep persisting in the doomed cyberpunk world you've created. See you soon.